Hello, George Romanich here. Today we will talk about universal law of gravity or the Newton's law of gravity. We will talk about this law in the context of atmospheric sciences. So at the end of this video you will gain deeper understanding of this great law and you will also know the physical background of the famous equation F equals mg, namely what the constant g is in this equation. So, without any further ado, let's go and quantitatively describe the law of gravity. Okay, we have two bodies. One body has a mass capital M and another one has a mass small m. Their distance is r, distance between their center of masses. Then. The universal Newton's law of gravity says that gravitational force is equal to G capital M small m divided by R squared, where G is uh, the so-called gravitational constant. It has value of uh, approximately 6.7 times 10 to the power of minus 11 newton times meter squared per kilogram squared. This small value of g tells us that gravity is indeed very weak force, in fact enormously weaker than electrical forces. Now let's apply this great law to atmospheric sciences where we have earth that has mass m e and radius r e and we have a parcel of air somewhere here that has mass m and the distance from the surface of the earth is let's say z then the above equation says that the gravitational force is equal g m e times m divided by radius of earth plus the distance from the surface of the earth squared. Now radius of earth is uh, approximately 6 times uh, 4, 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters, whereas the mass of Earth is again approximately 6 times 10 to power 24 kilograms. Now, we can already see that this Z is typically much smaller than Re because the heights in, uh, that we are interested in are order of magnitude of few meters, few hundreds of meters, few thousands of meters and so on, but not uh, as large as radius of Earth. So we conclude that Z is much, much smaller than Re. Therefore, this equation can be written in the following form. G, mass of Earth, mass of parcel of air divided, I factor out Re squared and I will get 1 plus Z over Re, everything squared, but because Z is much smaller than Re, then this term here is higher order and uh, can be neglected. So I can write this equation as M times G times mass of earth divided by radius of earth squared. And this constant, because notice this is constant, mass of earth, radius of earth and g are all constant, we call it small g or gravitational acceleration. So the gravitational force that is acting on a parcel of air of mass m is simply mg. Now, Let's apply this equation to the second Newton's law. So let's say here I have a earth surface and the part of the earth surface. And here I have uh, my 
air parcel with the mass m and uh, there is gravitational force gm acting down. I take that my z direction is positive upward and then the second Newton's law says that mass times acceleration in the z direction, I am applying second Newton's law in the z direction, is the sum of all forces in the z direction. Well, in this case, I only have gravity, so mass times acceleration in the z direction is minus mg. Minus because gravity is acting in the opposite direction of my positive z axis. I cancel m and m, and I get that az is equal minus g. Or the acceleration in the vertical direction is minus negative g. You can uh, clearly see that acceleration in the x direction is equal to the acceleration in the y direction and that is zero. Namely, there is no acceleration due to gravity in the x and y direction in this particular problem. Now, something very interesting to note here. I cancel this mass and this mass. And this is one of the great mysteries of our universe, because these masses in principle are not the same. Mass on the left side of this equation is the so-called inertial mass. It tells us how difficult it is to accelerate or push some object, object. how difficult it is to push car or uh, other person that is standing still. Mass on the right side of this equation is called gravitational mass. And this is a mass that tells us how an object, a, a body, responds to force of gravity. And in the universe where we live, it happened that these two masses are the same. We could have lived in the universe where these two masses are not the same. However, all experiments ever conducted show that these two masses are the same. If they were different, if they were different, then indeed, Perhaps heavier objects would fall faster than light objects, or maybe even light objects would fall faster than the heavy object, depending what would be the relationship between inertial mass and gravitational mass. Fortunately, in our universe they are the same, and we end up with this simple relation that says that the acceleration due to gravity is simply minus g, where g is this constant that depends on the mass of Earth, radius of Earth, and g. Now you know Newton's law of gravity, one of the greatest achievements of mankind. In my not-so-humble opinion, the greatest three laws ever discovered are second Newton's law, Newton's law of gravity, and the Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. These three laws describe 99% of phenomena around us. In fact, it is difficult to find phenomena they don't describe. An example is uh, nuclear forces and reactions. But voice coming out of my mouth and being recorded on this microphone and the video being recorded on camera and you being able to look at these videos on your computer or mobile phone are described by these three laws. Behavior of particles in the atmosphere is described by these three laws. In fact, forces that we introduced in previous videos, namely pressure gradient force, viscous forces and uh, frictional forces are representation of electromagnetic forces. I will talk more about uh, electromagnetism when I start uh, my series on atmospheric electricity. But for now, I hope you get deeper appreciation for these three laws that uh, govern pretty much our everyday life. They are responsible for great revolutions in our technology and understanding how the universe works. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.